Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the final game of the day for Starladder EU. It is Leons versus Vegas Squadron G2A. Thank you so much for joining us again. My name is Mott. With me is our statsman, Blaze, or excuse me, Mott Pax, and of course, my commentator, my co caster, Blaze. How the hell are you? Doing good, man. Looking forward to seeing the Leons jump into this game here because uh, the, what I've seen of them, they are actually like already clicking. Uh, I'm not sure how much they practiced since obviously Era was uh, participating with Fnatic and TI4 and 8 Mother was working with Alliance, but they're already seem to be really well on the same page. They have a lot of cool strats, and I would have to say if there's any up-and-coming team to look out for in the European scene, it would be these guys. Yeah, these guys, I haven't seen too much of them, but I've heard a lot of good things about them. Also, I gotta ask, how many Swedish teams are out there? It seems like there's a, a great <laughs> right? deal of them. It just trumps any other, back. I think, except for maybe the Chinese by, by a large Radiant margin. Team mm -hmm. so. Yeah, no, there, there are a lot, especially like there's two or three new ones that are getting a lot of attention, so it really does seem like it. But uh, yeah, already off to the draft here. Era likes to pick up the Drow Ranger, whether or not he gets the Visage, and obviously in this case it's a pretty obligatory second phase ban. So we're already seeing a very high tempo active draft from Leon's. I really, again, I've talked about this before. I like Drow, uh, even without the Visage. I think you need to actually maybe think twice about putting a Visage with that hero. Make, maybe making the hero a bit better off and, and more... We talked about the Ventral Spirit babysitting somebody like the Drow Ranger, but also getting another hero that can just save the hero's life. A Visage can't necessarily do that, but... Um, I, I Again, Drow Visage is good. Drow anything else is also pretty good as well. I think the hero is very strong early on in the game. Mid game has really, really solid right click and base damage. We'll have to see how things do turn out. They do have the Elder Titan though. Elder yeah, Titan plus Viper against the Drow Ranger. That Drow is going to be feeding it if they're not careful. So. Five seconds. Yeah, I mean they're going to take away her armor at the very least, but uh, I think they have the tools to keep her alive to an extent. It's going to be on uh, maybe. It, I think she has to go Mantis out of this game. Generally speaking, I look at uh, the Mantis down. I think it's an overrated item on the hero. It shouldn't even be in like the recommended uh, build. It should be in the situational one. But in this game, you can dodge a Viper Strike and you can break out of the Ancient Seal Concussive. So I think it's actually really important that he gets an early defensive item like the Manta. Link Dagger will work too, I guess. Yeah, either of those items are fine. Usually you'll see. Actually, they're both pretty common. I, I usually see Blink Dagger a bit more, but Med Style is pretty common as well, so... Um, either of which should be a good choice. They do pick up the Skyrath Mage, so even more ganking potential for Vegas Squadron. Invoker for Leons. Interesting choice coming out from them. Yeah, it's a really good hero to put in with the Drow, especially if you go for the Wex buildup, because uh, you'll make up for the one thing that Quasiwex sucks at, which is right-clicking creeps right. yeah, yeah. with the Precision Aura. Right. And then when he gets that max Wex, when he gets seven points in it, his attack speed is absolutely absurd. So what he's going to be able to do is essentially get the benefit of that Drow Aura with every single auto attack at a, a extreme pace with the Wex. And then as soon as you get one point in Exhort, you can Alacrity yourself for the same reason as amplifying the attack speed or ampl uh, Alacrity the Drow Ranger. And she absolutely destroys people. So the physical damage as well as the Wex control that the hero brings makes it a very prime pick to put in a core role alongside this combo. Still, the puck is something that you could definitely consider. But uh, sorry about the baby rage in the background. But. Uh, we do have a couple other alternatives, maybe, like the ranged uh, additions that could be along the lines of, I mean, obviously not the Visage, but something like a, um, I'm actually, there was a hero that I had in mind and it just completely slipped my mind there. Um, Ten what do you seconds. think? Nah, I'm not sure, man. I don't know what you put with the Drow Ranger to make it that much better. I like you, you, you talked about the Invoker already, and I think that's really the, the strongest thing here because the Quaswix, like you mentioned, giving that base damage over the Invoker is good. Um, and they go for the Undying. Wow. Okay. Yeah, this is good. yeah I, I like this. This is a Goblock style. They ran the Undying and Drow Ranger in a lot of games, uh, again, with or without Visage, and they were able to do a lot of work because the hero just. It helps people survive, which is the one thing Drow's really bad at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, if you're trying to get inside her marksmanship zone, you're probably going to be inside a tombstone this zone. This is what so. I was talking about, man. Like, making sure that the Drow Ranger is able to be babysat enough. The Ventral Spirit has one way of doing that, and dying with Solar Pez the other. I think this is a very good pick. Yeah. They're also extremely fast tempo. Like, Drow and Undying, they're all about Five the early mid-game. So we'll see how things do pan out. I like the Undying pickup here because... It's it's like you said, it's good for the mid game. If they get to the late game, there's really no guarantee that they'll be able to survive, especially against a Phantom Assassin and an Elder Titan. But earlier on in this game, Leons have all the tools they need to be able to take this game, especially with the Quaswex Invoker. So 
I, I like the early style coming up, but if this game goes longer than, say, 30 to 40 minutes, they might be in some trouble against this PA. Yeah, I think they actually need a Lion or a Shadow Shaman here. Get the Hex out early so that you can negate the Blur, and that will actually give you kill potential against her. Uh, it would force you to go for the offline Undying, though. They go for the Weaver, whose okay. Geminate also benefits quite a bit from the Precision Aura. But that is going to be an offlane Weaver up against a Skywrath ETPA lane. So not the easiest experience for him. No, certainly not. Um, but it, again, I, I, even with that pickup, I still like this draft coming out from Leon's. Although, Prepare there certainly is a good chance for Vega to come back later on down the, down the road. The thing is, though... Vega, definitely one of the more underrated teams here. And Leon's, like you said, they're clicking together. If it comes down to sheer skill and lane dominance, I think Leon's could absolutely win this. However, with the Weaver, it becomes a bit more difficult. They might dual lane, though. Look at it. They're going to send they're gonna send Jonas down to the bottom lane with the Weaver and uh, Hanskin playing the Undying as well. So the dual lane Undying Weaver seems pretty powerful. Not as powerful as some other combos with the Undying, but we'll see how things turn out. They're going to ward up the Rose pretty quickly. And, yeah. All right, so a lot of uh, viewers won't actually know these two teams particularly, so I guess we should go through some introductions. Just to look at Leon's on the dire side real quick, I'll, I'll run through that one f uh, left to right. We've got Hanskin running on the Undying. Janusimfan is going to be running on the Weaver. Over to the mid, we've got Ape Mother on the Invoker. Up top lane, we're going to be looking at Era playing the Drow Ranger, and that is going to leave Seal Kid to run your Benchal Spirit. And that'll be your dire side for Leon's. On your Radiant side, Vega. Um, they're going to have RC. He'll be playing your Elder Titan support. Eknart playing your Skyrath Mage. We'll have Seema the Slayer, Cam of the Slayer playing your Viper. And your safe lane. Mid lane, it's going to be no one playing your Phantom Assassin. And top lane, it is going to be. Oh boy. Nine Pash Bashu. Yeah. Got you it. can say pa Bashi. That's usually what he. I think. The, the Y and the U in Russian is definitely. One of those things like Yoki is Yoku and you get Pashi, ba Pashi Bashu is Pashi Bashu. I'm going to call him Pash, I think. That, that works. Any any kind of abbreviation would probably be preferable. I mean, listen, that. man, I, I, I am not a native speaker of the language. I speak English, and that's spelt in English to me, so uh, yep. we're, that's, that's how it's going to be, unfortunately. So... Oh, we're going to be taking some harassment here. Seal Kid is going to be able to put out some damage on him, but obviously the return makes it so that he has to keep Tango's flowing as well. But overall, the Centaur should be okay here. Like, there's no way that they get a kill unless he completely mispositions himself and underrates the power of the Frost Arrows. But uh, what do you think about this duel versus try down bottom? Like, obviously they didn't bring detection as far as I can see. Yeah, no detection on the lane, so that's obviously going to give the Weaver something to work with already but do you think the undying really has any stake in the lane i mean he's gonna have to get a lot of double decays off and then if he can get some of those he can throw up a tombstone and all of a sudden he can go to work early on in the game undying versus a trial and especially with another hero is disgusting however yadis fan has to be careful because this is not an easy lane to stay alive and look he's used two tangos already which isn't super bad considering the heroes he's up against but if they're not careful, they'll die to, to these heroes quickly. Like, I mean, at least the Weaver will die. I mean, these are three heroes that can pump out the damage, so. Most definitely, especially when Skyroth gets that silence. I think that's when the lane's going to turn a little bit. But at least for now, they're leeching the neutral experience, so Skyroth is not just jumping to level three. But in doing so, they put themselves in an aggressive position, and with this pause, maybe they can decide whether or not it's worth it to rotate Sioma up to go for the 3v2. Um, I don't think they will. I think they want to just keep him far, unless there's a situation where they are trying to fight. But I feel, I mean, this is the problem with this dueling is that you could just walk away. I mean, even with an, a tombstone, you could just walk away from these these engagements. So Lance could put the pressure on, but Vega could just respond in kind by either, like you said, being aggressive or just walking out. So the mid lane eight mother through a cold snap. It's level one cold snap. He does have the base damage from precision or which is fine, but um. PA is actually leading the way in terms of CS. So we are going to jump back into the game. Again, it's the last game of the day for Starletter EU. Starletter America is going to be coming up later as well, but I don't think I'll be doing that. We'll see. Arcane Bolt flying through. We'll hit up onto the Undying. Giannis and Fan is going to be taking some of the CS and stealing it. Shikuchi back to the lane. Bounty's picked up. Hanskin's going to pick up the Invisibility Rune. And he has level 1 Decay, level 1 Tombstone. I'm not sure where he's headed. 
Um, well, mid lane's actually very highly contested. Both heroes dropping low very, very quickly, and no more regen left on no one. So if they do get the invis tornado cold snap, the zombies should be able to do the work they need it to. But we'll see if he goes uh, far enough out, because obviously once you cr cross into this area here, you're going to be detected. So maybe better to just fall back, but looking for an opportunity if it presented itself. And they had no vision on this bottom room spot, but no one is playing very, very well, though, in this situation. Understanding that the hand scan is missing off the map, and there's no reason for him to be up far because he could farm with his siphling daggers if necessary. So, for now, I feel like Leons are getting a bit more off the map, except with, well, Seema the Slayer is getting plenty bottom, and mid lane is going pretty well for the PA, but they're getting some decent farm bottom. That's a double decay they're looking for from Hanskin. If they can get another one like that and pop down a tombstone, especially if he gets to level 2 tombstone, they could maybe start running at some of these heroes. Most well, definitely has high potential there. I mean, obviously, you can't underrate how big this hero can get early on. Just a couple of right clicks there. But the movement speed isn't really there just yet. 100 gold, he'll have the boots, then probably goes for a magic stick here. But he definitely needs to keep pace with his opponents. And that means either a long uh, tombstone timing and good set of zombies. We get one. And, oh, uh, my God. Look it. at that damage, man. Look at the damage. Eknart is going to be killed. That is your first blood going the way of Leon's. And... That is the power of this dual lane, even with the Tuso not doing much. The double decay comes out again. He's got four stacks, because why not have plus 17 strength? Our Zeke is actually going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Giannis and Fade. He doesn't have... He's got a stick charge. It's not going to be enough. Decay, he needs a right click, but Hanskin is no not boots. nearly fast enough with the Astral Spirit helping him out. Hanskin is, is dead. Down. Yeah, that was... It was a good start that ended up being an awful finish. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, I mean, the Drow, the Bassy, enhances the Geminate damage, but you can't get too overzealous because it, you only, yeah, it, you commit a lot to jumping into that position, and as we can see, the the early Shikuchi is just not short enough cooldown to be able to play behind the tower in this situation, not without, like, an Abaddon or at least a Trium Protector. You need that level 3 Shikuchi to be that aggressive, and that's just not, that's not, not ideal. So they go down, they get the first blood, but they lose two heroes. And in the process of doing so, that's probably not a good thing. Um, eight mother sitting mid. He's sitting at 13 last hits. 26 last hits for no one. And he's going to eight mother. Eight mother does not... Uh, he can invoke ghost walk if necessary. I'm not sure if he'll have enough mana for it, though. And no one's still diving. Stifling daggers available. He has phantom strike in five. It is level one phantom strike. He is going to invoke ghost walk. He doesn't have the mana, and he's going to get crit. And eight mother is brought down by no one. And meanwhile, top lane, though, they will take down the Centaur Warrunner as Era and Seal Kid combine up to get the kill. TP's a bit late coming out from the Skyrath Mage, however. And this leaves the solo lane down bottom. As Vega, Seema the Slayer, is up against Giannis and Fan, as well as Hanskin. So, I'm curious when these lanes start actually collaborating. I'm guessing uh, level 6 is going to be a pretty big turning point for Dora Ranger getting her marksmanship up there. She's already doing some good damage to the Centaur, who, again, can't stampede away. So, the 45% slow, he has to be careful how he kind of dances around that. But she's about to hit level 6. That's going to give her the marksmanship, and obviously that's going to make it so the Venge, Drow, all the ranged heroes are going to be hitting oh a lot harder than you expect all of a sudden. Seal Kid's going to get cast or shouted. Stomp. Double edge. Goodbye. Just an easy kill as he was out of position and gets uh, brought down. Bottom lane, Decay is coming in. Shikuchi, Seema the Slayer's got to be careful. There's the tombstone. Stomp's going to go. It hits onto both, so that should save their lives, and they will take down this tombstone as well. I'll try to deny it. Decay's going to go, and he is going to stick up, and now Giannis fan again too deep. He's actually dead again. He was not expecting the stick at all. Yeah, unfortunate there, and the Viper's just a little bit too tanky. He doesn't even have any corrosive skin. Like, usually you see the turnarounds there because they, they underestimate how much he can really mitigate. They don't know how much corrosive he's got, but this guy's actually finishing off the Weaver so quickly because he's actually been maxing this Nether Toxin. So essentially, whenever Weaver gets low, he's like, I can play around with 20% HP, no problem. Then the executing strikes come in with this bonus damage that the Weaver only has a 5 armor to deal with, so... It feels yeah, like really they had an advantage in these lanes, and they just kind of threw it away based on, we're going to dive the tower. It's just unfortunate. And mid is not going well by any stretch of the imagination. No one is just destroying 8 Mother now. And we talked about how getting that bonus damage from Jarrah would be crucial. It's certainly not helping enough. They're going to concussive shot him as well. If they can get an Ancient Seal. He actually has no mana to Ghost Walk either. They don't even need it. Yeah. He's just dead. 
So yeah, he's been playing very actively in the lane, but obviously this is a no bottle build from the Invoker. You rarely would see it, but in this sense, when he doesn't go for any real mana items, he needs to land EMPs on heroes in order to actually sustain his pool. Because as it stands right now, the uh, orb that gives him intelligence is the Exhort, and he's not going to be skilling that up. So it really is mana management game for him, as he, he's only running 460, and when he casts his two spells, that's about 100 left to spare. And when you're playing behind as an invoker, it just feels so difficult to accomplish anything. Even with Quas Wex, it's not easy. Tornado EMP is going to go, and uh, no one will avoid it. Nope, just kidding. He takes up the EMP. He will bottle up, however, and doesn't seem to really mind. Mm -hmm. Dagger, They're going to so... actually get the silence onto Centaur, so he can't stampede just yet. He will go for it now, but the last right click comes through. It's a waste, unless they can get something down bottom, and Yannis and Fan just Shikusi is away, so they will be able to get that freebie on the Centaur, and put some damage into the tier one top as well. I was watching bottom when that happened. I didn't see the top engagement, so. Yeah, right click, magic missile, then a gust into magic missile, and then a bunch of right clicks. Not much to see. If there's one thing that is going well for you, Leon's, it is uh, Era getting farm, and he is the top in net worth now, so. Again, a draw ranger in this situation is pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, so. And, and also shutting down the centaur, making sure he's not getting a blink dagger. The hero is not necessarily useless with a, without a blink dagger, but he certainly needs one to be super effective. Yeah. And he can now, at this stage, with the max out frost arrows, essentially whenever Centaur comes off the tower, just orb attack him. It won't take aggro away, and he doesn't have the stampede for 40. So it's it's Centaur to be on the defensive constantly here. And that's the problem. He's not going to be able to leech experience as well. He's certainly not going to get CS, and he actually just needs to be Radiant not in range of error at all. Uh, there is going to be the glyph of fortification used at the top lane. Is well, Pash doesn't really want to be here, and he doesn't want this tower going down either. Mid lane. They're going to throw up the Ancient Wrath of the Astral Spirit. Uh, Stifling Dagger goes again. I mean, 8 Mother cannot get close to this lane now at all. He's sitting at 22 CS. He has died twice. Uh, it's about they're as bad as you can get. Top lane, they will rotate. Custom Shot's going to go. Stifling Dagger, they're going to try to fight. Ancient Seal goes. They wanted a Magic Missile. Big Gust, though, coming in. Can Aero survive this? Stifling Dagger's about to go again. Magic Missile maybe on the wrong target. Here comes the dying a bit too late. Stampede goes double edge. They get Seal Kid. What else can they get on the back of this? Maybe Eight Mother. Oh, wow, Here comes no one. There's going to be the Tornado. Kenny Ghost Walk. He actually invokes Cold Snap. They got no one. Stifling Dagger. He needs to get this kill. And he's juking him out. And actually, no one. He crits him. Are you kidding me? No one should fall here still, but Stomp's going to go. Hanskin is still chasing no one down. No mana for that Phantom Strike. If he actually... He's stifling daggers. He's going to man up. He's no, going to man up. Oh, the no wave way. of terror, though. Oh, my God. That was almost amazing for no one. Yeah, for no one indeed. But it's just, <laughs> it's just like when you get crits like that, when you're getting juked so hard and all you need is just RNG... To to lay fate on you, it's just it sucks for the invoker because he really outplayed that. The zombies and the cold snap synergized pretty well. Only two points in quas, so maybe it could have been doing more damage and more disable. But end of the day, he played that really smoothly. But Radiant's still, just fallen. one right click comes through and finishes him off. That sucks. Either way, they take the top tier one. Drow building up the Yasha after only one wraith band plus Aquila. All the while, both Giannis and Fan and Sina the Slayer were still doing bottom. Uh, mech is very close to being completed for the Viper, and when he gets that item, maybe they start pushing a bit more aggressively. Um, you'd like to have the Phantom Assassin get another item, but or also the Blink Dagger coming up from the Centaur, both of which are far away, so it kind of really comes down to, okay, when do we want to be aggressive? Do we want to fight with this mech, or do we want to do something else? Uh, Ancient Seal, honestly, <laughs> goodbye, buddy. I don't know it's about it's that a really one. hard game for a Weaver, to be honest. They last picked it, but I'm still not entirely sold. Obviously, he benefits from the Drow a lot, and uh, if they were steamrolling this game, it would look like a really good pick. Like if the bottom lane really worked out, there would be no question. But as it stands, they didn't. They even drawing even, or in this case, uh, feeding a little bit on the bottom lane, it, it is actually showing its weakness. And uh, we're gonna see attempted to die on mid, and it uh, will go ooh, fortify. Faded, EMP Tornado, Cold Snap, and no one is going to be going down. You say no one, and I get confused Dyer's for a second. And then I laugh to myself. Yeah. And he it, it, it's uh, it's the, Odys uh, the Odyssey story. It's just like, no one has blinded me. I, I don't know. It's... Yes, 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 yes. I'm really getting old school with your literature references here. <laughs> Back to the Grecian days.
Assuming the slayer down bottom, putting some pressure in. But they are going to try to seek a Roshan. However, Ash was going to come in and spot this out. And they need to leave. Henske is actually taking a lot of damage. Stomp's going to go. Where's the follow-up, though? Oh, they want to finish this? This is dangerous as all hell. No, 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 no. You need to leave, actually. You all need to leave. We want it so Stampede. bad, Stampede. the Slayer gets one kill. Idea. Willie gets two. Undying Tombstone. Concussive shot. Mystic Flare. Actually not connecting. Not that it matters. I think Hanskin's dead anyways. Aero's going to try to man up. Viper Strike's oh, available no. for Sima. He doesn't even need it. Okay, no, that's the Aegis. They got the Roshan, but... Is it really worth it? No, probably not. Probably not. Hmm. I actually really like this build from Sioma. Like, you usually don't see it for like a mid Viper because he's highly contested. You expect him to get ganked. But on bottom lane, all he needed was the coverage of his Skyrath and ET. They, he knew he wasn't going to be heavily pressured in the lane. And what it allowed him to do was go for just like maxed Nether Toxin, two points in Poison Attack early, and ignore the Corrosive Skin until the fight started breaking out. And so what he has is a huge amount of physical damage whenever people are dropping low. And of course, with an ET, a Centaur, a Skyrath, people are going to be dropping low. So he's actually able to fully uh, maximize his damage output with this skill build. And he got so much safe lane farm that was pretty much guaranteed that he doesn't feel squishy at all. He's got Treads, Magic 1, Aquila, and Mech. And uh, he is a very tough cookie to crack. Yeah, I mean, Corrosive Skin level 3 now, and he's even got a point booster for the Viper, so this is difficult. Leon's, they had a really good start with the Draw Ranger, but that is the only hero that is remotely farmed on their squad. The Weaver is sitting at 3k, and that is right above the Arzeek Elder Titan, who's building towards that Yule Scepter of Divinity. So, meanwhile... Yana's some fan. Blink stomp. Stampede goes as well. Uh, they're gonna kill him. He is dead. Very I think nice kill. To die like three more times in the next ten minutes. Like once this blink came out, it's it's the hardest Weaver game you've ever seen. I didn't even notice he got the blink until that he just used it there. Patches in the driver's seat now. They're gonna start knocking down towers, and why wouldn't they? They have mech. They've got all of the fighting ability mm -hmm. they need. It's, time to it's go. interesting, but I think that, that three heroes top might be able to push attack. faster than five heroes bottom, just because how great Drow is. But uh, we'll have to see. They got two points in Vengeance Aura. It's not ideal. So obviously the lower HP tier one is going to fall. But I think if okay, they'll just rotate. That's the smart call. Play defensively here because honestly, there's you can just go keep going for pickoffs on the bottom tier two. Just keep hiding in the tree line, warding up this side, and you can just use it as a bait for Giannis and Fan who's about to die. Oh. Century, they get the sentry, they get the stomp. blink stomp. He is dead. Goodbye, Giannis and Fan. TP rotation's a bit too late to the party. TP coming up from Pash. Tombstone, and... Swap. and swap. The, nice. Wow, he just got that off. Shift Q, Dota. Pash will fall, and that is a nice one-for-one -one exchange at the end of the day. It could be a lot worse for Leon's. Still hate to be the Weaver here, but... I don't know. I, I feel like I, I had a bit of a curse on him. I was just pointing out the reality, but... If he dies twice more in the next eight minutes, I'll feel pretty bad, actually. I mean, it's certainly a possibility with how this game is going. Thank God for error, though, man. Can you imagine if error wasn't in this game right now? Look at the net worth and just bask yeah. him for a moment. Yeah, it definitely is. It's it's something. It definitely puts him in the game. And uh, he's going for that Manta early, like I was talking about. Uh, it's all In addition to the Viper Strike and the concussive ancient seal that I was talking about breaking Dyer's before. It's also really top. good for dodging out Centaur War Stomp. So the animation is very projected. The Hoof Stomp takes a moment and after he blinks on top of you and it is not a, by any stretch of the imagination impossible to dodge with the Manta style and vulnerability frame on the Hoof Stomp. In fact, there's a lot of pros that practice that um, for a few minutes, uh, like a week or whatever, just to make sure that they're, they're quick on the reflexes there and it's a really good way of turning a fight. And, well, the the problem is dodging all of those things at once. Oh, maybe not at once. Meanwhile, Era, speaking of which, nice swap, but, you know, he still is in some trouble. On the backside, Hosh was trying to stomp. They get the kill, though, on Era. Jumping in, big crit from no one. Time lapse out, but here comes Sima going to where Viper Strike on 8 Mother. There's going to be the Echo Stomp, the Earth Splitter as well. Seal is done. Hansket is getting bursted down. Mystic Flare, four dead all day. Giannis and Fan, the only one alive. They get two kills in the back end. Sentry Ward on the deck. Um, Yannis and Fan has Shikuchi up in a couple of seconds. He will survive. Stomp misses. No one might continue onward here. He needs one or two daggers, and he actually backs away, realizing the stick has gone. But still a huge fight for Vega as they are taking it to Leon's right now. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, they've got everything they need, right? Like, the Elder Titan is now at level 11. He's got all the skills he could possibly desire to, to bring people down. The PA, she's got her Dominator, so she can start manning up. The Viper is insanely farmed and is going to have an Aghanim Scepter here in, like, 14... No, 400 gold. Oh, gosh. It's, uh, it's getting to that point now, man. It's certainly becoming difficult for Leon's, and this draft with the Drow Ranger, which is all about mid-game priority and mid-game domination, is not really dominating in the mid-game. In fact, if this game goes late, I don't think they even have a chance. I mean, the Weaver needs to get some incredible farm, and he has died. Luckily, he didn't die in that last fight, but he's died a lot, so... So, Era did this a lot, of a lot of the time that we saw the previous Draw Ranger pick up from him. Farming the Ancients, double stacking the Ancients, whatever he wants, is just standing up on the high ground there. Even if it's single target, his right click damage per second is still very substantial, and yeah, I think he's going to be farming up those Ancients as much as he can. Currently, no uh, wards covering it. The, the Plateau Ward on the eastern side was sentried out, so he's free to do this for as long as he knows where the enemy is, really. This is a pure victory indeed. Despite their disadvantage, Eris net worth is in the top 30% of Drowsy 6.82 at 15 minutes. So it's pretty good. I wonder what that means for a Viper's record here. Ugh. Well, there's, uh... there's a lot of Vipers, though. That's the thing. There's not a lot yeah, of Drow Rangers. True. Swap Rocket out. Hero. This could be the fight they're looking for. Eknar tornadoed up. The is going to go as well. EMP. And they will get one kill off the back end. It's a one for one exchange. The Martyr being obviously, well, hold that oh, thought. Hand scan oh, is going to oh. get caught out. Flesh Golem's popped up, but he gets crit twice. And no one is not done yet. Viper Strike onto Era. Gust on to no one. Era's going to try to TP out. And you're dead. Three dead. Double kill for Seam of the Slayer on the back end. And a nice usage of the Yule Scepter. Our Zeke is going to stop up. He's going to connect onto Giannis and Fan on the meantime. No one has picked up all four of those heroes. And now he's looking for Giannis and Fan, but he. This is not the hero that he can take down, as, of course, he's very, very slippery as the, the Weaver. So another fight goes the way Vega, and it just gets worse and worse as the game progresses. They can't fight with that kind of a Tornado EMP Tombstone. I don't know where they really can. At this stage of the end, the Stampede forward, they're the, the aggressors. They're going to be able to take the fights, take the towers, and I don't think just spread the map Dota is going to work. It's their only alternative because obviously the team fights are failing them, but it's they are so far behind at this stage in the game that it can be just a tier two, uh, a couple of those, and then go for the Roche, and then go for the end game. It's got to be some Leon's to do something very upsetting, very surprising, because uh, right now they just they don't have the resources to or the wherewithal to be able to bring the opposition down. You can't team fight, and if you don't think that split pushing is a good idea, in any other game, you'd be thinking about GG at this point. But it's it's maybe not that bad for Leon's, but it's still pretty bad. I mean, no one is going to have his VKB after this creep. Hmm. Uh, this creep. Just kidding. He missed it. Rip. Tell okay. his VKB now in five seconds. Still, though. And, yeah. Uh, blink stomp down bottom, maybe on Invoker. Yep. yep. Double edge, earth splitter. Do they need it? Sure do. They get him. It's that kind of game, man, for, for Leon's, honestly. This is a good team being, being made a fool of. Roche is up in a minute as well. Sixth highest Viper net worth at 20 minutes for 6.82. Okay, fair. That's fine. Not too shabby. I mean, he's been CSing up a storm. He was fed a lot of kills down bottom. Uh, those were pretty unforced errors coming out of the Undying and the Weaver, but they really just wanted to really show what that lane could do, and unfortunately they, they overstep their bounds multiple times over. So, yeah, six highest net worth, that, that sounds about right, and that's without a Midas or anything like that. I have seen some a lot of uh, Viper Midases in the SEA scene, but in this case he's doing it just bare bones, the Ags, the Mech, getting the, the items that do things, and uh, I'm happy about that, as they're going to be able to bring down this tower very quickly, and uh, all Era has been able to pull out is this Manta style. You say bare bones, but 20 minutes, Ags, Mech is it's pretty freaking incredible. Mm -hmm. Will Scepter will take the mana away from nobody. Blink, uh, stomp, oof, missed it. Nice Dyer's ghost walk reaction from Aid Brother, but they still lose the 2 2 tower regardless. Roche is up. All really they need to do at this point is, is Vega need to jump into the Roche pit, take it, get the Aegis, and force an engagement without losing any towers in the process of doing so. Pash? He was thinking about Blink stopping there for a second, decided against it. They'll head mid. And with the BKB now up for no one. He also got up to 1,200 gold somehow within the process of get, getting that BKB. That was impressive. <laughs> yep. 
Bounty Rune, probably Killing Creeps, and uh, the tower died down bottom. So a few factors there, but still very, very quick farm from this fella. And he's stacking the Ancients, so... They might even take the stack now. I think they will. Yeah, it shouldn't be anything to stop them. Even without the Battle Fury, it's, it's a hero again that does a lot of single target damage, and with the Blur and the Lifesteal, can just go right at it. He's actually just taking no damage. It'll take a bit longer because he doesn't have the Battle Fury like you mentioned, but regardless, he doesn't seem to give a damn. It's still per, per strike. I mean, you're still getting a lot of essentially damage per second, and therefore, because you're farming Ancients, gold per second. So, yeah, I would say the, the GPM value of this is as good as farming Lane Creeps, and you could do it 100% of the time, you're pretty happy. Ape Mother does have the Ghost Walk active, and the detection isn't there, so he's just going to be able to TP away. Yeah, they, they might have spotted him at the end of that TP, but no. And they need some detection. They could use a jam, actually, at some point. They do have a sentry on Eknar, but he doesn't seem to be in a rush to pick up a gem yet, so. Tier 1 tower getting pushed into. Uh, Leon's doing something they probably should have done 15 minutes ago. Stifling Dagger's gonna go in. Seal Kid's gonna match him to self. BKB, Seal Kid, you are dead. Era is probably is also dead. Ooh. Oh, nice heals. Yeah, that was good. And they get, uh, actually, the Radiant Courier going down in uh, the backside. You can see Weaver went all the way back. And they still lose two heroes, though, in the process. Yeah, and uh, the PA just hit level 16, so she is in uh, just ultra mode. She, she has gotten the Ubers up, and she is able to just absolutely destroy people. The Roche is going to go down very quickly. Uh, of course, Natural Order doesn't affect Roche or anything like that, but just the right clicks. They're, they're very strong right now. Uh, it will also give uh, Eknart some experience. It's actually interesting to note that he's the only level 10 hero on the map. He's not able to find his level 11 just yet, and he is pretty weak by comparison to everybody else. I'm kind of I'm wondering where he's positioned himself that he hasn't found some experience from these 26 kills. A lot of the kills have been coming with Blink Stomp and maybe even... Uh, oh, Eight Mother. They, they know he's here. They have a sentry. Yep, that's not going to work. Maybe it will. Oh. Yeah, he got the Aegis, didn't he? No, he got the Roche kill. So. Okay, yeah, he got the Roche kill. Okay, I, I got confused for a second. It's it snatched, and I assumed it was him. And then he didn't respawn. I was like, uh... It took me a second. Between the two, I mean, if you're going to die twice and just deny the Aegis that way, or get the Roche kill, and then I guess it's... I don't know, because obviously now the Aegis is on the PA, and she's... I mean, killing her twice doesn't seem like something that's possible with even BKB? with buybacks. No, you're not going to kill her twice. She's almost unkillable at this point. Unless you find her alone, and there's nobody near her, and you somehow lock her down. Mm. But that seems improbable. But Hanskin's got his mechanism, so, he so does. he's feeling pretty good. I mean, that is something, man. That's at least one item that goes towards them being able to try to take this game back. But they are down. I thought the net worth would be a lot worse than this. I honestly did. It's only 8,000. It could be terrible, but it's not. And that's, I would say that there's three that are kind of the low hanging fruit here for Vegas Squadron, especially the Skywrath. Like, I really don't know where his gold has been going. He's got uh, Geometry Sight picked up by the Elder Titan, and otherwise he's just rocking her cane boots. What a player. He has gotten a couple of kills and assists going his way, and, he, and I think a lot of it has to do with um, his team has just been too far up in front of him, killing all of these heroes and not leaving him anything to to farm with, so. But here we go. Time for Figa to push out of the tier 3 tower and take the base. At least they'll, do, they'll put their best effort forward. Stomp's gonna miss. Stampede, why not dive? Magic Missile goes in, swap out. BKB pops. This is maybe not the best dive. They're only gonna kill Silk Killed right now. But not getting no any crits. Uh, no one's trying his best, his damnedest even, but he's out of his BKB now. He's dead. Maybe? He wants a little yawns. He's not gonna get him. He has his Basher. He's actually dead. Yeah, it takes Why? a while, but when he's all by himself, they can, they can make that happen. And the respawn, no way to Phantom Strike. That's huge. If he can't Phantom Strike out, he may actually go down a second time. Oh, they want him, through. but the mech, the blur, and he walks away. Giannis and Finn is dead. No buyback for him. Tornado's going to come through. No one has to back away. He's actually very close to death. Gus they're tunnel visioning him. Like they're is... losing so much time, and yeah. Tioma just stays on the front line. Double yeah. kill for him, about to all be right, well. Wow. <laughs> They don't need nobody, or no one rather. They just need to see with the Slayer. But they do force out a lot of bad buybacks. They have to TP away, and they will do so. Uh, damn, they're just kind of tunnel vision on the two full lives of the Phantom Assassin. Deceptively tanky with that evasion. 
and that allows the Viper just kind of do his thing. Now he's going to be picked up, uh, probably just a farm, and uh, yeah, Leon's they they force some buybacks there. They lose out on the Invoker buyback and the Weaver buyback, and those are the two heroes that I think need the progression the most. Like the Drow Ranger could have maybe afforded it because she's in a position where she has actual farm that she's working with. Of course, she would prefer to not do that and get the BKB, as uh, I believe Era's saving for. But end of the day. Weaver and Invoker were on the cusp of being involved, cusp of having items that can bring them into the fold and allow them to fight. But, I mean, Yasin fan, he's just sitting on, like, the Lincoln's components. He's not feeling too good right now. So much for being involved after that buyback. Stampede, Seal Kid, Stomp, Double Edge, got some shot. Nice mech, Bench Missile, Missile Clear. All right, he's dead anyways. Viper Strike goes, Hanskin is in some trouble, trying to TP away, and he actually Ooh. might make it. Wow. Nice tornado coming in from Ape Mother. Keeps him alive. Um, but they still take Seal Kid and they'll try to push in. They're actually Tombstone's down. This is go time. No Tombstone. If, time to yeah. take the tier 3 and time to take the racks. I don't know if Tombstone was really preventing them from doing so. No, but, probably uh, not, but I mean, at least it's something. Yeah, it's it's just uh, the extra bit of leverage to push them over the edge. Taking down this tier 3 without fortification and then uh, fighting an equal playing field from there. Tier three is done. Another Rex is getting focused. Tornado EMP comes again. BKB for no one. He goes oh! in big crit on the eight mother. Goodbye. He is uh, dead for 70 seconds with no buyback. Posh will pause. Let's get some showcase views. One eight hundred. A lot of action going on. Lag. Uh, look at that PA. Seal kid. Softy. His effigy. What about this one? Vu Apteco from eight mother. Regit. Reggae shark. Okay. And we're good. Here we go. Back into the fray. No one's BKB now on Dyer's cooldown. Thoration has been completed. They take the melee racks. The no one swaps out. He's oh, in some trouble. Earth Splitter, though. Earth Splitter's going to kill everybody. Hanskin's low. He is going to get right click down. Seam of the Slayer going to work. Yule Scepter up on air. Giannis and Fan has to time lapse back. Nice man to dodge. Stampede's going to go through. They take down Seema. They get the melee racks, though. Dyer's middle Leons aren't attack. done yet, though. Nice hold. If they had gotten one Radiant's more, I think they'd be actually feeling pretty attack. good about themselves. The melee racks is a big loss as far as long-term progression, but they Dyer's need something to get themselves attack. back into this. The gold and experience Oh, top my seconds. lord. Oh, passion. 15 HP. And they give away the gem. Why, why? Uh, they do get mm. the kill on Scarath, but... Top so uh, going back to the fight prior to Era dying there, they actually gained 2,400 gold and 6,600 experience. So despite the fact that it was essentially a two for two for the fight recap that I'm referencing, they were able to pull so far ahead because the death of the Viper and the PA is a huge profit, especially to the Weaver. The Weaver just got 1,500, 1,600 gold actually from those two kills. A really big deal. But it did come at a cost. They lose Era here, and they do lose their melee Rex. However, the, it looks like the Weaver was the one to recover the gem in the end. So that's uh, something, at least, as far as reestablishing map control and trying to drag this one out. Because you know they're not going to win this game in, like, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. They have to bring this to, like, a 50-minute game, get a hex up on the Invoker, maybe. Something to control the PA a little bit better and as her BKB wears down. Well, I mean, that's the thing, is that the BKB is starting to get low. Seven seconds at 29 minutes in. R6 is DDoS or something. Well, I mean, the game's close to ending. If you guys just finish it off, wait, wait. Honestly, Radiant's though, Leons are doing their best to stay in the game, and they're doing a very good job of it as well. Drill Ranger now getting a Manta style with the BKB close to being done. If Eric can get that item, all of a sudden this becomes actually kind of difficult to finish this game Radiant's off. Bottom you can start split pushing, start being effective in terms of your damage. Take your next Roshan as well. But they're already so far behind. It's good that they've only lost that melee Rex, though. Radiant's given how things have gone. It could be it's definitely better than it, it could have been, considering yes. how bad the bottom lane went in particular. But uh, as we see the net worth kind of creeping up there, the Weaver will be involved. She still can't like DPS against the Centaur because he's got that blade mail. But for the most part, you've got the Lincolns. You feel survivable enough to at least get a time lapse off in the fight. A DD rune here. Uh, nobody to bottle it as far as I can see, but still a nice little pickup temporarily. And, uh, yeah, it's just going to be kind of everybody spread the map for the moment. They're going to get themselves back together here. Viper going for an assortment of DPS items, and it's going to be the Manta style to be completed first. Or not. Sold. Yeah, he, he thought about it. Decided against it. He actually has a Chrysalis. 
Maybe he goes for Daedalus. I'm not sure. No, he will go for the Mantis Sal. He picks up the Ultimate Orb. So, they'll take a couple more Ancients. Roshan is up in, we don't know how long, soon, hopefully. And So, there's a, a Vladimir's on the Undying. So, they do get a nice bit of armor from that. They also have the Mechanism, which gives plus two when it's activated. So, they are more survivable than they were moments before. And these are critical because you're up against the Natural Order. Like, you can get all the agility you want. You're not going to be more survivable against Arzik's uh, aura. So, you need to get the Vlads, the Mech, sometimes the AC. And, uh your survivability in that fashion beyond that uh of course you need to look into ghost scepters which will allow you to kind of disengage from the pa and the viper speaking of pa she has a hyperstone she hasn't built anything since that hyperstone sulkuras would be the probably more standard item and they'll put pressure on the tier 2 top lane it looks like and try to take this down smoke maybe coming out no leons are just going for kind of this really weird aggressive play but yeah. Sima doesn't seem to know that this is happening. There's no Observer Ward here for the Meridian Squad. He actually backs away smartly, though. It's a good thing, too. Dyer's They're all there. Leans are all waiting in wait. Yeah, they might actually get a tier 2 out of this, but they will have to, of course, TP back quickly. Um, there is no way for Sioma to cancel TPs, though, and there's also no way for him to rejoin the team. So they just take the tier 2 and back off. They're fine, but Vega don't give them the chance. They're going to try to just defend this. Meanwhile, Hanskin's going to get caught out there. Splitter's going to go double edge. Era getting caught. No one has no mana because the EMP did so much work. They kill Hanskin, but what else can they get oh, on the back end of this? Giannis and Fan has to time lapse now. Swapping to no one. No one is in some trouble. Blake stomp, though. Oh, Big are. man to dodge from Era, like you talked about earlier. Eight Mother is silenced up. Now Seal Kid slowed and stomped up as well. Big fight coming out so far for Leon's. Era's going to TP away. He'll make it out. Giannis and Fan is wow. going to work. Eight Mother TPs away that as well. Only happened. one dying. And that is, of course, the undying. And no one has to find a way to not get frickin' EMP'd every single time. It's becoming an issue. Yeah, honestly, he is completely kiteable when he doesn't have any mana to jump to his targets there. So that was absolutely huge for them to get the EMP onto, I think, three heroes. And then after the BKB was gone, to just bring him down. Now, uh, although the Manta timing was perfect for the Hoof Stomp, Era actually combined his Manta and Gust. So he ended up having no Hoof Stomp to dodge as the Centaur died in silence. But... Nevertheless, it was a cool play, great reactions from both the Invoker and the Drow, and they played that fight very well, getting a huge amount of profit, and you'll see that golden experience swing. They are actually putting themselves right back in the game despite being one lane down. I mean, they have BKBs now on a lot of these major heroes. Well, specifically Weaver, obviously, and the Drow, the only two. A BKB was picked up for our Zeke, and that's nice, but... They also lost their range racks mid, and that's a full set of racks down. That's nice if you're Vega, but... You need to take these fights, and you're, the biggest issue for me is that no one is playing this horribly, I feel like. He's making so many mistakes. He's played the game so well early on, and then he just proceeds to throw it all away by getting kited in a situation where he shouldn't be getting kited. So, he needs to step up his game in terms of being able to get kited around the map. And you would also think with Vega's team that they would be able to control things a little bit better. I mean, they've got Hoof Stomp, they've got Earth Splitter, they've got Echo Stomp, they've got Viper Strike, Concussive. His targets should be, like, in melee range of him constantly. Like, it shouldn't be a struggle for him to get involved. But uh, in this, this case, uh, is, uh... the EMPs have been hurting his entire team, not just him as far as being able to move, but the rest of the team as far as being able to control we... as the ET didn't get enough off there. Can we talk about this pause? Hold for a second. I, I want to give them the benefit of the doubt here, but let's just look at what's happening. No one walked in front of the central ward with eight mother nearby. Hanskin was the one that paused and said one second. He was the one that's been pinging out on no one. It is notable that they can't move their cameras because they're the ones that paused uh, this. That's but right, that's true. But they should. We'll they saw him. Turns into something. I don't know if it will. No one's gonna okay. back away. It, it does have DD. So. They throw up a tornado and that could have dispelled the invis. So that would have actually made him invisible and made it. A, a potential pickoff, but end of the day, they both walk their separate ways, and Vega just runs around with a DD rune. So, yeah, they go for the smoke play instead, and they maybe look to bring down the ET down bottom. Yeah, he's alone. At least for Roche, the time actually, being. I think they're looking for Roche. It's about to spawn, and they'll see it right when it comes up. Yeah, Roche is going to be up. There he is, and uh, time to head to the Roche pit. But oh, the Centaur Conqueror is going to walk in, or Centaur Corsa, rather. Yeah, oh, and they got no. the spirit too. Yeah, they know. They saw. Yeah, I mean, when you're 
Manta Illusions are pushing out from the eastern angle here, then you probably seem like you're doing something south anyways, so... First Splitter's gonna come in, it's gonna connect on a couple oh, here, Leon's, they wanna finish this off. There's gonna be the BKBs going in, and they will finish Roshan, it looks like. EMP, Tornado going. Roche is done, but they already get the kill. Weaver gets one. They're going to jump into the pit. Undying is his tombstone up. They're going to kill one. Blake stopped going oh, in as well. Her they swapped her out as well, but it's already too late. Era loses the Aegis. Giannis a fan. Lincoln is broken. What about Seal Kitty's getting focused down as well. Turn their attention towards him. Era is going to get focused as well. Met style cannot get out. Good guys, but still doesn't matter. Double kill for Sima. Giannis a fan is up in the air. Crits up. Do they have detection? Absolutely. Triple kill for Sima the Slayer. Four staff blink up to the high ground. They want eight mother. Stampede is down for 20 seconds. And that is the fight they are looking for. Impy was off the mark. They couldn't get cut at that time. And now they'll try to finish this next set of racks is all. That was brutal. That was the time where no one did not get hit by the MP. Weird sentence to say, but yeah. that's uh, that's the screen name for you. Anyways, uh, that is going to be something that could just break down the bottom lane entirely. I mean, the buybacks are available, but as they buy back, they are just hindering their progression, and there's a good chance that they are just going to dig, their, some, dig themselves into an early grave here. Uh, tier 3 dropping down pretty low, and after the CMP, there's nothing to stop them from just staying on this tower. Or BKB is going to go, and they're going to go to air. Mansa Sal is going to fly. If strike goes, he's going to have to BKB out of it. No one is going in deep. Uh, no one is oh, actually nice dead. Um, that uh, is a bit too much. Five back from Weaver comes through. Stomp misses on 8 Mother. Four staff stomp. Beautifully done. Double edge. 8 Mother is not dead yet. Now over to K. On to Pash. Sunstrike going into the backside somewhere. They're going to back away as our Zeke is getting chased down. He's dead. They can't take the tier 3 tower again. Earth Splitter is going to go. Stomp is going to fly. Nope. Just kidding. Earthsplitter does a lot of damage to Giannis and Fan, but they defend their tier 3 tower again. And they needed the Assault Cross, which was flying out currently to the Phantom Assassin. They just couldn't get it mm -hmm. done. And they're just throwing yeah. bodies at the base down. And it's not working out as well as they would have hoped. Yeah, so with that negative armor, at the very least, the Invoker would have died. But I want to point out one thing that we have yet to mention in this cast is now that the PKB is down to five seconds, the Deafening Blast is so frustrating for the PA to deal with. It is a four-second disarm, as well as, I believe, a one-second stun right now. So yeah. this just takes her out of the fight entirely, and uh, it's just about timing your cooldowns against that BKB. Because Sioma, he has been doing a lot of damage, he's been getting a lot of kills, but at the end of the day, he's still a Viper. He will get six slotted. He will have a Daedalus, and that's going to hurt, but it's still something that your team can manage against with uh, the right usage of the Undyings and uh, the right Focus Fire. But as it stands right now, the big issue, the PA, is manageable if you can myself. EMP or deafen her, and that's all on the Invoker. Well, you're talking about the Viper, but it's, it's more so the Viper and the PA together. Yes. If you're not killing one, then the other one is killing you. Or if you're, not, if you're not killing both, then one of them is killing you. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like gradually Leon's uh, draft is progressing that way too. Soon enough, the Drow and the Weaver are both going to be real threats. They just need one big damage item on the Weaver. And I would say the Drow's pretty much there, though she would really love to have that butterfly. But yeah, I just I kind of feel like if you control one and you focus the other, then you still have a better shot at the fights than just kind of leaving it to chaos. Regardless, it's 42 to 20, the score that just seems kind of ridiculous when you think about it. But Vega. They've had a tough time breaking the base. They got the one set of racks earlier on in the game, and since then they've had a tough time. They've won a lot of fights, but they have yet to actually secure the victories. So they'll look to do so in maybe the next engagement, whenever that may be. Maybe farming a buyback for the Phantom Assassin. I don't know if they need to, since that mid set of racks is gone. If they go to bottom and they lose uh, all five heroes, maybe they can push in. But it's... Um it's a tough situation. Sets our buys a Morbid Mask for whatever reason. I'm not sure what he's going to turn that into. I don't think they have a Vlad's actually yet. Yeah, they can use that. He's got the Bastard Ring, so that's going to be what it yeah. is very yeah. shortly. Yeah. So I'll pick up a Vlad's, get some extra armor going their way. And and I, does it double the lifesteal or just add in 10%? I'm not sure. I don't think it... Vlad's is 16% uh, lifesteal, so plus 1%. Well, that's something. Oh, bottom lane. They're going to find Posh. Stampede, cold snap, he's not dead. He has four staff, forced. They missed the gust, he's got blink in one. Swap back out, and uh oh, this is gonna be bad. Posh isn't even dead yet. Seal Kid blown up, BKB for Era now. He's gonna Manta out of a Viper Strike as well, it looks like. Hansken pops up the Flesh Golem. He's gonna get stomped up as well. Hansken, there is the deafening, and it's gonna catch on to two. No one has to back away. Era's starting to go to work. Ektar is dead, and Hansken is still alive. No one has to TP out, and he will survive.
Not the best fight for Vega. Good oh, engagement for Leon's. So freaking good. The swaps have been amazing from the Venge. The deafening blasts are really doing work now. Man, I, I, I have, I, I believe in the dream. I, I believe there's still hope in this. It, it shouldn't be. There really shouldn't be. But at this moment, I still think that they have a way to pull it through. I mean, these fights have been working out. It's just that they've had to buy back and expend so many resources to get on the field in the first place. And Leon's, they will not push any further than towards that tier three tower. They're not going to go to the high ground. They back up and they have to defend at the home base. And Vega are frustrated. They must mm -hmm. be. They cannot push into this tier three tower. Demo They've lost ready. a couple of fights here and there. And even when they win a fight, they, they force out buybacks. And these buybacks are going to be off cooldown in a couple of moments. Like another mm -hmm. two minutes and all of a sudden the buybacks that you just used that were very important are ready to go. And even the buyback for the Invoker is ready. So... So then the question becomes for Era, do you buy out for the Butterfly now that you have yours off cooldown? They don't have a Hex, they don't have an MKB, but it is your, it is your buyback. Do you think that you just kind of have to all in so that you can bring yourself back into it? But uh, Giannis a fan with DD will have to hold that thought, and uh, the Stomp will be forced out. Oh, good job. Anyways, the Butterfly on Era. Do you feel, kind of feel like you have to buy out now to get yourself back in the game? I or are you too worried of mm, the, the death of sure. buyback? I'm not sure. I don't think they're in that dire of a position where he he really needs to buy his butterfly. I mean, they're they're winning fights without him having it. It's not like he's in a position where he's like, okay, we need this now. They don't need that item. They need him having buyback because so far buyback has stopped any sort of aggression from Vega onto these tier three towers. And if they lose a if they lose him again and he doesn't have buyback. That might just be game. I think buyback is huge so far. So. We'll see what he decides. I, I could see it both ways, as it is an incredibly good item for his aura and for him. But yeah, the buyback, one pick off and you're done. It could be the, the mistake that costs them. But for now, they're happy to be in the game at all, I would say. And we do see that uh, out of fr almost frustration, Vega are just going right down to the bottom line. The well, if they win die. this fight here, they win the game. Yeah, the tier three will die in one hit. The fortification will defend the racks. Uh, that's not important. And yeah, Dyer's we'll have to see. There it goes. Goodbye, tier three tower. Seth we were trying to snipe a courier that only has sentry wards. This could be a mistake. He has no TP. Giannis and Fan is not in this fight. They need to go. They don't know that he doesn't have TP. They throw up the sentry. Glyph's done now. Conk shot's going to fly through. They are being very are passive attack. about this. Yeah. I, they see the scroll, so they assume that he's going to be able to jump back into the fight. But I don't see the cooldown. They're backing up. They are backing up. Stomp. Does hit on an arrow. Will they fight? Force out with the tear. Just puts some pressure on the tier 3. Puts pressure on the racks, excuse me. Tornado's going to come in. Oh, EMP, we see him now. Nah, he's fine. No. So that's on cooldown now. Maybe it is time to go. I think so. I think this is the time. You got the stampede. You can fight this. Swap out. And they, they, it doesn't matter whether they think or not. They can fight it. They're going to go anyways. They're going to go into eight mother. He just immediately ghost walks. There's the earth splitter. Meanwhile, Giannis a fan on the backside. They have to buy back already on Seal Kid. He's the only one that's fallen. Magic Missile onto a creep. Onto an illusion. No one is getting brought low. He will fall. The only one so far from Vega. Time lapse out. Buy that coming in. They've lost one. It's going to be the Undying Bike back. They've lost the Melee Racks. It's time to leave. They've lost no one. They've lost Eknart. Giannis and Fan is still chasing. He gets one kill. He will Shikuchi. See him with the Slayer. Is trying to man up. This is not the time for it. I'll have to back away. He has a T. He just have TP, perhaps. He's the not going is to. Ah. Oh. Real, between the two heroes, between the two heroes, they just do a little bit too much damage, and they get uh, the dire courier in Centaur return. Jumps it. That was actually more than likely an assault cross on top of Era's butterfly. So, well, no, it wasn't. I mean, he could just get the butterfly. Oh yeah, yeah walking yeah, to it. It's just yeah, yeah. the uh, wraith, the cuirass components for Ape Mother, but obviously, it would have been great to have. The end. The big thing here is the Roche isn't spawning just yet, despite them being a little bit early to uh it did, despite them having a great opportunity to take it if it was up and uh their range racks is down to 175 permanently while their melee is gone so they have a three racks disadvantage almost four but they got a ton of gold from that they only bought back on the venge right no it's venge and undying. And undying. so they're cycling I mean, through their buybacks it feels like they're getting they're getting reinforcements every fight regardless of who's dying who's buying back and the buybacks are actually big it doesn't matter who's Who's coming back in? Whether it's the Venge, whether it's the Undying, whether it's the Invoker, whether it's the whoever. 
they're still getting kills off the back end of these buybacks because of specifically the BKB. It feels like no one is, is almost useless at this point. It, that's what it feels like. Yeah, he has to play it so very carefully in these fights, otherwise there's, he just doesn't do anything. I mean, the, for example, jumping on the Invoker when they didn't have detection on him, that was a mistake. He ghost walks immediately, maybe thought that he wouldn't invoke it, but he did, and that waste I did a ton of time for no one there. He he has a hard game to choose his targets, but it is a lot that it's what he needs to do. He needs to step up, or they might not be even be able to close this one out despite their advantage. Stop! Uh, Silk kid caught out. He's dead. No buyback. Nice pick off on Tombstone's force set as well, and that's not really doing much. There's too much in the way for the Tombstone to actually do anything. Earth Splitter goes in, EMP. Posh is actually in trouble. So oh, Strike will connect, and I mean, yeah, they know he's there. Uh, he needs to get forced to the low ground in about five yeah, seconds. Yeah, he's got it. And he will be able to do so. On the other side of things, Zero is sitting up under the high ground here. And, and the, the zombie went in, shows Roche. So they now it's, it's, it's going to be an all out engagement to try to take this. I think if you get Aegis on no one. That should be the end of the game. But here we go. This should be the fight of all fights. They're going to send an illusion in first and foremost. They're going to kill it quickly. That's oh. a Mystic Flare use. That is all of a sudden now. That's a problem. Weaver's got a flank off. He's yeah, right he's going to go into our Zeke. Now Hanskin is up. He's got his tombstone. It's already been put down. Air is getting oh. caught out. No one can't get the kill. The Bash is there. He gets the crit at the end. Hanskin is in dumb trouble. The double edge comes out as well. Leona, Giannis and Fan has his ancient seal up. He's taking a lot of damage. He cannot time lapse out. Air buys back. Uh. Eight Mother is alone. Yule Scepter is up. Stop is on cooldown for a couple of moments longer. Viper Strike 8 Mother will have buyback and he's going to have to use it. The honest fan time lapsed back in with his buyback. Misses the stomp. They're going to go back to Roche. Meanwhile, regen up for the uh, Phantom Assassin. Should be back in just a moment here. Giannis and Fan still wants to fight this. Oh, Stop's going to go through. Ancient Seal should be ready. They don't need it. They kill him. He's down for 125 seconds. I don't and know why the didn't buy back. If anybody's going to buy back, it's the Invoker to control the fight. But Weaver just diebacks. The Invoker is still in the grave with the buyback available. He really wants that AC, but they're about to lose the game. Yeah, they need to have him buy back. And without Giannis and Fan, I think this game has become... I wouldn't say impossible, but it's oh. just it's another degree of, of difficulty. So, big fight for Vega. They take the Aegis. They take Roshan. I think that was Cheese as well. Maybe not. I suppose yeah, it, it wasn't. should be. Nobody has I it. guess there hasn't been that many Roshes, so. Well, oh, that's surprising. 47 minutes in and still no Cheese Roche. Range Racks bottom will be taken. Two sets of Racks is complete, completely torn asunder here. Well, Jans are in some trouble now. They have the tier 4 mid, but it is only one tier 4 as the creeps have been assaulting the base. They're going to head top instead. They're going to go for the Mega Creeps and finish this game uh -oh. out. Seal Kid is donezo. Gems on the deck. No buyback for Seal Kid. Uh, and Voker will be back up. If he dies, he will have buyback. Tier 4 falls mid. And now the Ancient is exposed and will lose uh, to Mega Creeps. Well, not necessarily, but Maker Creeps will be coming shortly. Yeah, this is our all-in right here. They got the AC, don't, not the butterfly in. Oh my god, what a stomp. Air is going to get caught out. Earth Splitter destroys both heroes. Eight Mother is forced to buy back. He is the only one alive. And uh, he'll try his damnedest here, but here comes no one. GG is called, and Vega. It took them a bit, but man, did they deliver at the end of the game. Really tough one there. <laughs> Kills off the right fan. He has the Aegis. They take the throne after a very prolonged game. They honestly could have taken this one. If they had absolutely made no mistakes, had a perfect game, I could see this one ending in 25. But Leon's, they hold on to it. They find some nice pickoffs. They find some nice control. They exploit the reduced BKB. And they are able to drag it out this far. That alone is a testament. But still, Vega Squadron are the victors. 48 and a half minutes here. They take this well-deserved win. Yeah, this was a really big victory for them. Same with the Slayer up on the Viper. 18-3 and 20. He was farmed from the get-go. No one played a bit of a questionable game in my opinion, but they were able to eke out the victory regardless. Guys, it's been a long day of Dota casting for me and for Blaze, obviously. Uh, Starlighter America is going to be coming up in just a bit, but I will not be casting it. We'll see if anybody from BTS could get that going. But as far as Starlighter EU is concerned, we're done for the day. Again, I'd like to give a big shout-out to Blaze for joining me, as well as Mott Pax, our stats man. Um, we'll be done here. We'll be handing it over to whoever is going to be casting for SLTV America pretty soon.